Hey everyone, this is MPZ5. I'm bringing you a tutorial on how DNA replication works. For those of you who don't know, I'm dual majoring in chemistry and biology, and I have a genetics test tomorrow, and I thought I would study and maybe help somebody out in the process. So with that said, we're going to set some things up. This is a DNA backbone. It's phosphate and ribose sugar. This is an RNA backbone. Just this, I mean, not that one. This is the RNA backbone. This is ribosome um, pinto sugar as well, but it's a little different. This is going to be G. This is going to be C. This is A, and this is T. Those are the nucleotides you typically work with. This is going to be U. It's not used very often, it's just used in the RNA, but it is what it is. So, first things we got to talk about is the structure of DNA. You have a double helix, but if you flatten it out, it's kind of like a ladder, I guess is about the best way I could say it. I'm not sure exactly what else I could say. We're going to say this is the DNA backbone. There's no holes in it, or it won't work. We're just going to go with this right now. And typically, there are base pairs. You have base pairs like a T. Wait, let's not do dumb stuff to start off with. Alright, so this one is going to be A, A, G, I mean no, A, A, C, G, C, T, T, A, T, C, G, G, G. That will be our first nucleotide set, that's our first language or whatever. We're going to match it up. A's always belong with T's. So A, T, A, T. This is going to be a C, so we need to put a G with it. The G gets a C. C gets a G. T gets an A. A. T. Ah. A. G. C. 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 So as you can tell, it's complementary. It's going anti-parallel to each other. It's basically a the G and the C is always stick together, and I think remember that because of Grand Canyon. And the A's and the T's always stick together. I remember that because it spells at. So that's just kind of how I remember it, and they're always going to pair with each other. All right, so this is your DNA strand. Let's say this is like. A bacteria like E. coli or something, right? It would be a, in a big circle and it would be long, like it's far farther than you can see. So we're just going to do a little section here. Now, there's an enzyme, or there's these little holes, they're called origins. They open up in the middle of the cell. Let's say the origin starts here and the cell starts separating. So we're moving this. up here. I'm just going to do that. And the A's are going to go down below. So this just got separated, right? That thing opened up here. Now this is going to be like a bubble in the DNA. It spreads out. Like, this backbone's right up against it, but I'm just keeping it out just to make it a lot easier on myself in the long run. I'm not showing you guys. Alright, now there's this thing called heliclase. We'll just use this dirt block for heliclase again. And heliclase is right here. It's going down the, it's going to go down the sides on each end. Basically what it does is between these, these nucleotides is a hydrogen bond that holds it together. The G and the C have a three hydrogen bonds and the A and the T have two hydrogen bonds that hold it together. And that's the only thing holding these two strands together. 
So this heliclase is an enzyme, and it goes through and it breaks that hydrogen bond, and that's its sole job. So let's start out breaking them. Let's say he gets all the way to here. It gives us plenty of warm room to work with. So that's working this direction. And for reference, we're going to make this here the 5 prime. 2, 3, here I'll do it like this. Let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 prime on this side. And this is going to be the 3 prime. And we're looking at the bottom strand right now. Alright, so it's 5 prime over there and 3 prime on this side. Simple enough, right? So this one is working and it's, let's say it's gotten down to here. Alright, welcome back everybody. Alright, so the heliclase went through and it's an enzyme and it went through and it opened up this DNA strand. Now there's room on either side over here to base pair or to make another backbone and then the base pair. Right? Okay. So now, we talked about how G and C like to hang out with each other and the A and T hang out. They always pair up. Since this got split up, you would think that they would just snap back together, right? But there's little proteins on the outside that hold it open while this is working. And there are other enzymes that take effect here. What we're doing is replicating this strand. There's going to be a copy of this strand here on this one and a copy of this one on this one. We're just copying the complete genome. So first thing that happens is after the helicase is getting there, there's, there's guys, these enzymes called polymerase and they synthesize DNA. So they think, well, yeah, why aren't they working? Why aren't they getting, getting to it? And the answer to that is they can't start just anywhere. They have to have a starting point. And the starting point is um, RNA, like RNA primers that RNA polymerase makes. And we're going to use this as, remember, this was the RNA background. It's a different backbone than this by one atom it's different but it's a big enough different to make a difference also any pairs up that would pair up with a or that would be a t is a u instead with rna polymerase so it started opening we'll say it started opening uh we'll say it started opening here right that's where it started opening. So, everything from this point this way on the 3 to 5, because it, it replicates on 3 to 5. So anything on this side of it, going this way on this strand, is going to be the leading strand. Once it gets started, it's going to start here and it's going to keep replicating this direction. Remember, things can only replicate this way, but there's nothing stopping it from replicating until it's done. Now, on this side, that way, and this is just this bottom one we're talking about right this second, this side, these, you ha it only replicates from this way to this way. So how's it going to do that, you, ask. you know, you might ask. How is it going to make that work? This is called the lagging strand. That's this way. And it, it's pieced together piece by piece with these primers. You need to primer at the start of the leading strand, but that's the only time you need it. Lagging strand, about every thousand blocks or so, there's things called Okasagi fragments, which is about a thousand base pairs. And every thousand blocks or so, it needs a new primer to start. And obviously we're not doing a thousand base pairs right here, because that would be farther than I can see that way. But, we're going to just show you how it works a little bit. So the leading strand it needs to make this RNA backbone. So this RNA back, oops, sorry, this RNA backbone forms, right? Yeah, I should have moved it out farther, it'll be all right. 
we're just gonna have to have this connect here. This RNA backbone bone forms. All right, so we have. We're gonna say this is eight to ten because you look the primer is eight to ten long. But we're just gonna say it's this for right this second. So, if you remember, C pairs with G, and typically T would pair with A. But remember, this is RNA. RNA does not have T in it. Instead, it has U. So U is going to pair with A. All right. So now it has this primer. So polymerase, and this is polymerase three. He does. He's the one that does most of the work. He's really fast, and he has this little clamp that hooks onto the DNA, kind of like this minecart here. This clamp holds him down, and he stays on it. Otherwise, enzymes are lazy, and they will do what they have to do, and they'll leave. So this guy wants to leave, but this clamp is holding him to the track. So you can push him, and he goes that way, right? He's working this way, and he's synthesizing DNA as he does so. So, he knows he makes DNA. So, he's adding DNA backbone all the way to where he's been. Okay, we're going to stop this guy. He's getting a little excited. Maybe. Okay, whatever. Who cares? He's, he's eventually going to get down there anyway, so that's fine. Alright. So, this entire time here, he is, you know, making DNA in a continuous motion. So, since DNA, the A needs a T, it's going to be a T. A, T, C, G. All right, he just made a continuous strand, and he's going to continue to do so as he goes down. This is where it stopped right now. This is where it stopped the winding. Right now, it's still connected. And as it goes, he's going to keep following it and keep synthesizing this strand of DNA here. Now, remember, it's... Okay, so polymerase A, or polymerase 1, that was polymerase 3 that was doing that. Polymerase 1, on the other hand, we're going to grab a different car for him. Polymerase 1 comes along behind him and goes, okay, it needs a starting spot, so it starts here. It's like, oh, there's a stop, start to spot, or a place to start, so he starts there. Now... He goes, whoa, 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 polymerase 3, what's your problem, man? This is not even the right kind of backbone. What are you doing? What are you building with? And what is this? What, th these are, this is not right. This is not DNA. So I've got to clean your mess up. He goes through and he breaks it. He eats it up. And he starts making DNA because it's supposed to be DNA. So he makes DNA and matches it and it works, right? Now this is good, right? And he does it until he gets to you know, about here when the primer is done. And after that was done, he's like, okay, we're good now. And he leaves. Again, that's like eight to ten pairs. And again, enzymes are, unless they have that clamp like he has, he has a clamp. Unless they have that clamp, it's going. They're going to just get bored and leave after about eight to ten pieces. So you know how the leading strand works. It goes through, and after it fixes that part, it's. I mean, it's pretty good. It's not going to need anything else. In the same way, it started out here. It was going to have the. You know the wrong kind going this direction, right? And anything past, or no, it will have the you know wrong kind going this direction. It will the polymerase that guy down there would go along this track, and he would do the same thing on here, and he would base pair it the way it's supposed to be base paired. It would start out with the bad stuff, and then it would get to the normal stuff again, the normal DNA. This is RNA, remember? In this case, it would be a C and a G, because there's no A, so there wouldn't be a U. So besides that backbone, it looks the same as DNA, but it's completely different. The cell can't use it right, so it needs to convert it to DNA. This guy here would come along on the side and go, oh, there's a starting spot. Dude, what are, you, what are you doing? Why are you building this the wrong way? 
you have to put the right backbones in. Man, do I have to do everything around here? So, he puts the right backbones in, he base pairs them correctly, and it goes that way. After he gets done with the bake, the part that was different, he said, oh, looks good, and he's done, and he leaves, right? He just leaves, he's good. Now, you're asking yourself probably, that's all well and good, because it's going this side over here, keep in mind, this is the three end on this side, and that's the five end on this side. So if you're looking at it, facing it, it's kind of like you read it left to right, like you read normally. It's going to be left to right in this regard, the three prime to the five prime is the way it's being built. So, you're wondering, well what about this stuff behind? It's, that's got to catch up, right? It's got to copy this. And you'd be right in that. But see, the problem is, the, these guys can only go one direction. He's here, and he's working that way, right? I mean, he's, he's going. He's working. But how are we going to fix this? They can only go in one direction. So what they do is they need another primer. Remember the bad one that doesn't work? So every time this Heliclays touches, it goes, oh, we need a primer here. So I'm going to make a primer. It goes, bam, look at this. Okay, so I got this primer that's about 8 to 10 long. Looks like we need a C here. And we need a G here. Well, it can only go this direction. So, polymerase 3, another guy, working this direction, goes, hmm. So it's pushing this direction, right? Well, it can build just fine, it's working. It starts making the normal DNA after it gets past that little starting section that it needed to start on. And it makes DNA all the way to here. That's just what he does, right? I'm going to stop here, stop it for a reason. And we'll see in a second. It's supposed to stop right there. Alright, so we're going to have to base pair these with normal base pairing. So this is going to need an A. This is going to need a T. This is going to need an A, an A, and a G. Now, that looks all well and good, except for this right here. Again, this guy comes along and says, Alright, I'm going to start here because I have a starting spot. And he said, Whoa! Dude, what are you doing? Quit putting the wrong thing down. I gotta fix everything. So he goes through, eats it all up, because he says he's gotta do it right from the start. He remakes it. And we're good to go, right? It looks looks good. He says, My work here is done, and he leaves. Now this guy gets here and he stops and he goes I can't connect that I don't have the energy required to connect that there's a gap there so I guess I'm done and he quits what actually happens in all, in all technicality is he gets grabbed from here and then the cell goes hey dude you got some work to do over here because at this point this has moved on separated these bases and it started a new section. So it starts at the beginning of that new section to go from the 3 to the 5 again. See? So it's going to make another little strip. It's going to stop right here, isn't it? Because it can't clear that gap. It can't fix that gap right there. Well, there's another little enzyme called ligase. It comes along, this guy's a little OCD. I mean, he's, I mean, when I say a little, I mean monumentally OCD. He walks along, he's like, yeah, this is this looks good. It's all nice and neat and perfect, and it all matches, and I'm excited about this. Look at this. Whoa, whoa, what? What? what what's going on? What's, 
Who's crazy? Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? You didn't fill this in. This is not cool. Not cool, guys. I'm going to have to fix this. And he fixes it. And that's all he does. He just goes through and continues it when it's broken. Because the lagging strand, the way it's it has to be put on, it's going to have that empty spot every single time. After every thousand fragments or so, there'll be an empty spot in the sky ligase, you know, OCD ligase, he comes up and he has to fix it. He can't help it, it's compulsion. So he fixes it, and at the end of the day, it gets all the way around, and you have two separate strands of DNA instead of just one. I hope that you found this informative. If you like it, please hit that like button, especially if you found it useful. It lets me know that I did a good job and I'm not wasting my time. I would happily do some more of these, especially when I need to study anyways. And I just hope it helps somebody. Please hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. And this is MPZ5 and I'm out.